Hello, I'm Professor Von Schmohawk, and welcome to Why You. In the previous lecture, we saw how complex numbers can be added or subtracted. In this lecture, we will demonstrate how complex numbers can be multiplied. We will start with a simple example, multiplying the complex number 3 plus 2i times 2. Since this complex number is a sum of two numbers, 3 and 2i, we can use the distributive property to multiply this sum times 2. 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 times 2i is 4i, resulting in the complex number 6 plus 4i. This multiplication can be visualized graphically on the complex plane, as we showed in the previous lecture. For instance, the complex number 3 plus 2i is represented as a point whose horizontal position is determined by the value of its real part, 3, and whose vertical position is determined by the value of its imaginary part, 2i. We also saw that each complex number can be visualized as a vector, which is drawn as an arrow extending from the origin to that point. When working with vectors in the complex plane, the length of a vector is often referred to as the modulus or absolute value of the complex number. When we multiply the complex number 3 plus 2i by 2, giving us 6 plus 4i, We see that the resulting vector points in the same direction as the original vector, but is twice as long. In other words, the modulus has been multiplied by 2. We can also say that this vector has been scaled by a factor of 2. For this reason, when discussing vectors, real numbers are sometimes referred to as scalars. So now let's look at a more interesting example multiplying the same complex number 3 plus 2i times the imaginary number i. Just as before, we use the distributive property to multiply this complex number times i. i times 3 is 3i. And i times 2i is 2i squared. Now, since the value of i squared is defined as negative 1, 2i squared is negative 2, and the result of this multiplication is negative 2 plus 3i. Visualizing this result graphically, We see that the resulting vector is the same length as the original vector, but rotated counterclockwise by 90 degrees. In fact, multiplying any complex number by i will always produce a vector of the same length rotated counterclockwise by 90 degrees. For example, let's take the result of this multiplication, negative 2 plus 3i, and multiply again by i. Using the distributive property, i times negative 2 is negative 2i. And i times 3i is 3i squared. And since the value of i squared is negative 1, 3i squared is negative 3. The result of this multiplication is therefore negative 3 minus 2i. Once again, the resulting vector is the same length as the original vector, but rotated counterclockwise by 90 degrees. If we then take that result, negative 3 minus 2i, and multiply again by i, we get i times negative 3. 
which is negative 3i. And i times negative 2i, which is negative 2i squared. And since i squared is negative 1, negative 2i squared is negative 2 times negative 1, or positive 2. So the result of this multiplication is 2 minus 3i. Once again, the resulting vector is the same length, rotated counterclockwise by 90 degrees. If we continue this process by taking that result, 2 minus 3i, and multiply a fourth time by i, we get i times 2, or 2i, and i times negative 3i, which is negative 3i squared, or negative 3 times negative 1, which is positive 3. The result is therefore 3 plus 2i, bringing us back to the original vector. We could go on like this forever with the same rotating cycle repeating every four multiplications by i. As we saw in this example, repeatedly multiplying any complex number by i produces a repeating cycle of 90 degree counterclockwise rotations. Even repeatedly multiplying i times itself produces a series of 90 degree rotations that in this case represents i raised to increasing integer powers. For instance, starting with i, if we multiply i times i, we get i squared, or negative 1. Multiplying again by i gives us i cubed, or negative i. A third multiplication by i gives us i to the fourth power, or positive 1. And a fourth multiplication by i gives us i to the fifth power, bringing us back to i. Just as we saw before, continuing to multiply by i will cause this rotating pattern to repeat forever, with every four multiplications by i bringing us back to the number we started with. So let's say that we have the expression i raised to the 15th power. Since i to the 4th power is 1, we can eliminate every group of 4 multiplications by i without changing the value of that expression. Therefore, i to the 15th power is equal to i to the 3rd power. And since i squared is negative 1, i to the third power is negative i, and so is i to the fifteenth power. So any power of i greater than three can be simplified by repeatedly subtracting four from the power that i is raised to. So far, we have multiplied a complex number by a real number, and multiplied a complex number by i. So what do you think will happen if we multiply a complex number by a real number times i? We have seen that multiplying a complex number by a real number scales the vector, changing its length without changing its direction. And multiplying a complex number by i positive vector to rotate counterclockwise by 90 degrees, changing its direction without changing its length. Therefore, if a complex number is multiplied both by i and a real number, the vector will be rotated counterclockwise by 90 degrees, 
and its length will be scaled by the real number. So at this point, we should have everything we need to know in order to multiply two complex numbers together. For example, 2 plus i times 3 plus 2i. We will start by showing how the numbers are multiplied algebraically using the distributive property. And then we will see how this multiplication can be graphically visualized using vectors. Multiplying using the distributive property, 2 times 3 is 6. And 2 times 2i is 4i. Likewise, i times 3 is 3i. And i times 2i is 2i squared. And since i squared is negative 1, 2i squared is negative 2. Combining these results, we get 6 plus 4i plus 3i plus negative 2. We can now combine like terms. 4i plus 3i is 7i. And 6 plus negative 2 is 4. So the product of these two complex numbers is the complex number 4 plus 7i. As we have just seen, multiplying complex numbers is not difficult. We simply use the distributive property and then combine like terms, remembering that i squared is negative 1. But how can this multiplication process be visualized using vectors? We will do this by changing this multiplication into a vector addition. First, we will multiply 3 plus 2i by 2 and draw a vector to represent that result. Then we will multiply 3 plus 2i by i and draw a second vector representing that result. Finally, we will visually represent the sum of these results by adding those two vectors. So let's start by drawing the vector for 3 plus 2i. Next, we multiply 3 plus 2i by 2. This produces a vector pointing in the same direction as the vector for 3 plus 2i, but with twice its length. Now, in a second step, we multiply 3 plus 2i by i. This produces a vector of the same length as 3 plus 2i, rotated 90 degrees. These two vectors are then added. This graphically produces the result we obtained algebraically, 4 plus 7i. So using vectors, we have graphically shown that 2 plus i times 3 plus 2i is 4 plus 7i. Now, let's do one last example, multiplying 3 plus 2i by 2 plus 4i. Just as we did in the previous example, we will start with 3 plus 2i and multiply this number by 2 and 4i and then add the two results. Multiplying 3 plus 2i by 2 produces a vector pointing in the same direction as 3 plus 2i but with twice its length. Then we multiply 3 plus 2i by 4i. As we saw, multiplying by i produces a vector rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise. 
However, since we are also multiplying by 4, this vector will be 4 times as long as the original vector. These two vectors are then added. Producing the result, negative 2 plus 16i. So we have shown graphically that 2 plus 4i times 3 plus 2i is negative 2 plus 16i. Of course, this can be confirmed algebraically by multiplying using the distributive property. Two times three is six, and two times two i is four i. Likewise, four i times three is twelve i, and four i times two i is eight i squared. And since i squared is negative 1, 8i squared is negative 8. Combining these results, and combining like terms, 4i plus 12i is 16i, and 6 plus negative 8 is negative 2, which confirms the result we obtained graphically. Earlier in this lecture, we said that the length of a vector in the complex plane is called its modulus or absolute value. So the modulus or absolute value of a complex number is its distance from the origin on the complex plane. If in addition to the complex number's modulus, we know the angle of its vector from the positive real axis, then we can uniquely identify that complex number's position on the plane. That angle is called the argument of the complex number. Although we would need some knowledge of trigonometry to show why this is true, when two complex numbers are multiplied, their arguments are added and their moduli are multiplied. As an example of this property, if two complex numbers had arguments of 40 degrees, and 160 degrees, then the argument of their product would be 40 plus 160, or 200 degrees. Additionally, if these numbers had moduli of 2 and 4, then the modulus of their product would be 2 times 4, or 8. So far, we have seen how to perform addition, subtraction, and multiplication using complex numbers. In the next lecture, we will see how to perform complex division.